Today we are going to talk about acne and acne is so different from uh, eczema in that uh, eczema is um, immune mediated. When it comes to acne, this is where you are going to deal with the uh, clogging of the skin pores, uh, the oil glands, bacteria on the skin, all those. But you are going to see the mechanism of that in today's video. So eczema will be in another dedicated video, but today acne. Now acne Mm, it's one of those stubborn skin issues that you're going to find out there and uh, so many people have gone through this and especially along the teen ages although you're going to find this also in adults and uh, sometimes even in kids now how does it form because in this video you're going to focus on how they form because this is very important you have to know how they form so that you can be able to mediate or to create a targeted uh, uh, treatment for your acne and um, this will be more effective if you know exactly how they form and uh, what to target. You're also going to look at some um, the factors that usually contribute to you getting acne and also get to know some of the available drugs and some of the available maybe formulations, therapies that you can get out there uh, that will treat acne. First of all, let's get to know the mechanism of formation of acne on your skin. Now you see the skin has a mechanism of oiling itself. So your surface of the skin, let's say you take a shower and uh, you remove um, the oils on your skin and then uh, you just go out. You just just take your time. Your skin will look supple right on because you have something we call sebum. Those are the oils in your skin that are produced inside your skin and come to your surface to make sure that your skin is not drying off and cracking. So this is a mechanism of keeping your skin intact and uh, making sure that you're not cracking up and attracting infections that are not necessary. So how does acne form? Now, acne usually form from a uh, clogging of the oil glands. Now you see, you have oil glands in your skin that help in a creation of uh, that sebum, the sebum that you're talking about, the skin oil. Now, if I mention sebum and the oils, skin oils, they are all the, I mean the same thing. When it comes to now draining of that sebum from the oil glands it usually come through a duct that drains into the hair follicle and then from the hair follicle it goes up uh, through the hair shaft it will come out and then drain on your skin and keep your skin supple sometimes you might get some factors or some things that will clog that hair follicle so things that are going to be jammed inside uh, the hair shaft dead skin bacteria oils and when that happen uh, after clogging that that pore that leads the hair shaft out you're going to also uh, clog uh, that duct that actually lead from the oil gland into the hair follicle. So that channel gets clogged also. Now remember your oil gland is still producing that oil and what will end up happening is um, you're going to find a accumulation of that oil which will attract a very very stubborn bacteria mostly from the staphylococcus family. It's a normal flora on your skin but once it gets there you're going to get inflammation and you're going to get a formation of pus and that's why you're going to get that inflammation accompanied by pus and pain at the same time. Some parts of the body are more prone to getting that acne because of the nature of the skin that you have like uh, the forehead, uh, your face, um, your chest, um, the shoulders, and also the upper back now around this point here. You're going to get so much of those acne. The reason for this is the skin in those areas contain a lot of oil glands and uh, I think this explains why uh, those areas which I've not mentioned are more prone to getting dry skins. In short, when it comes to acne, we have three things that we have to deal with. The first one is the bacteria on the skin and uh, inside your pores. Second, the clogging of uh, your hair follicles or the pores. Uh, the fourth is production of that oil. Now, let's get to know some of the factors or some of the triggers that lead to you getting that acne. And one of them is hormones. You see, um, this high correlation between androgens and this is testosterone with the formation of um, those acne spots. This is uh, because, you see, testosterone leads to enlargement of the glands, the oil glands that form sebum. So you have a very, very high chance of overproducing that sebum, meaning that um, you also have high likelihood of getting those things clogged. So the channels will get clogged because now the volume which is inside that, uh, that vesicle, inside uh, that gland, is more than it can support. So you're going to get that bump 
and uh, that accumulation of that oil will attract bacteria of course teenagers are more prone to getting those acne uh, episodes because this is when the hormones are maturing and we are targeting specifically androgens here the testosterone and that's why boys are more prone to getting them and uh, get a little bit a severe case of um, acne because they have a higher concentration of uh, testosterone but also remember girls or females they also have testosterone but in smaller quantities but that androgen will also contribute because at this stage they're also going to get that increment of the same androgen in them so they also uh, are not uh, left behind so they also get that acne but this does not mean that any other person cannot get now you get acne in adulthood also in children and now i'm going to flip the coins women are more prone to getting those acne episodes compared to men because of the nature of their skins they're different so when you look at uh, the skin of a man physically it, it looks rough and uh, that of the, the ladies it look uh, a little bit more smooth this is because on the surface of the skin uh, we have the pores so the diameter is larger in men compared to women meaning that men are more likely to drain more sebum onto the surface of their skin compared to women we have drugs that will contribute to you having those acne spots or acne episodes corticosteroids we have um, lithium we have um, testosterone they are all because of the obvious reason now let's go to foods carbohydrates or sugars they are highly likely to cause acne when uh, you take more of them so there is a high correlation between high intake of carbohydrates those sugars and uh, getting those acne episodes stress does not cause acne but what it does is uh, if you already have those um, acne spots or acne on your skin then it usually make it worse now let's go to treatments and um, i've divided this into three they're supposed to be two actually but uh, let's have three categories the first one is those that you apply on the skin we call them topical applications then uh, we have those that you swallow the drugs that you swallow and we have others so when it comes to the topical um, application we have those creams and drugs uh, that you apply on the skin where you have those marks or where you're more likely to get acne spots and they help in either relieving the pain or um, uh, reducing the factors that contribute to those acne remember we say that we have three things that we have to think about when it comes to treating acne uh, those are the production of the, uh, the sebum the oils uh, the clogging itself and the bacterial infection so you'll have to make sure that those three things are kept in check now you have drugs like a benzoyl peroxides the and some brand names are like a clear seal street eggs panoxyl um, the function of this is to reduce the bacteria on your skin so they kind of clear most of the bacteria that you have on your skin especially those uh, staphylococcus that are very stubborn when it comes to this when we reduce the number of bacteria that you have on the skin it means that you are going to have less chances of getting episodes where that bacteria will get into that pore um, which is clogged and cause an infection so by reducing the number of bacteria on your skin you are more likely to not get those episodes now we have salicylic acid and the work of this which actually is available over the counter um it usually dissolve the dead skin so on your skin we have different structures we have the dermis and the epidermis the epidermis these are a tiny layer that's made up of our dead cells and they help in our protection of your skin but removing this uh, or majority of those dead skins will help in um, preventing the clogging of those um, uh, hair follicles so when we prevent the clogging it means that um, the sebum will uh, come to the surface more easily without getting any obstruction and uh, you're less likely to get those episodes now another drugs as they like acid will help in um, killing the bacteria on your, on, on your skin and also it relieves you of the pain by reducing the inflammation another very common treatment is uh, using retinoids now retinoids these are derivatives of vitamin a and uh, these ones you'll have to be very patient with them because they might take a little bit longer before you see the effects and the function of uh, retinoids is to unclog the pores so it treats or it unclogs those blackheads the whiteheads 
So when that is cleared, it means that uh, the, there will be a good pathway of the sebum. And when it comes to application, don't just apply on the affected area. Just apply on um, the skin areas or the skin patches where we have mentioned that they are more prone to getting those acne episodes. So the whole of your skin and give it time, like uh, some months, some um, like two to three months, that's when you're going to start seeing the results. And especially if you have uh, those black heads and uh, white heads. Now we have topical application of antibiotics like uh, azithromycin. We have tetracycline and they help in a killing or keeping in check uh, the bacteria on your skin. The same with the benzoyl peroxide. Now remember, when you get that acne, you're more likely to get inflammation because of infection by a bacteria. But uh, how do you treat uh, that inflammation? We have drugs like uh, Dapson. So this is a corticosteroid and it will help in uh, keeping check the inflammation. Now we talked about topical applications. Let's go to the oral. Now these are the drugs that you swallow. First one, antibiotics. When you have like an infection inside your skin, remember now it's not you are not killing the bacteria on your skin surface. You are killing those that are already inside. When you have inflammation or that infection inside your skin, the best approach will be to use an antibiotic that will help in killing those bacteria and especially one that's very stubborn, staphorias, it's one of those. So topical application might not always be that sufficient, so taking antibiotics will help. We have retinoid drugs and I'm going to list some of them here, the brand names, and uh, they help so much in uh, shrinking the size of uh, that uh, oil gland. So if we shrink the size, it means that we are going to produce less of that, so you're not going to have the clogging. Hormone therapy and this is more effective when it comes to ladies who are more prone to getting those hormone imbalances. When you have an increase in the androgens, those are the testosterone, the best thing is to inject them with um, something or to give them oral drugs that will help in increasing the amount of estrogen. Remember estrogen counters the effects of testosterone so if they have an elevated amount of testosterone just increase the amount of uh, estrogen in them and uh, you are more likely going to treat that acne. And in the category that I'm calling others, we have other things like uh, peeling of the skin, the chemical peels. Uh, you peel off the layer, or the top layer of the skin, and uh, you're going to most probably unclog most of the pores. And uh, we have uh, other treatments like uh, using laser, injecting uh, your skin with, um, what do you call them? The steroids. And they help in uh, regulating that inflammation. I hope you have gained something in this video. And if you're fighting acne, I know you're going to win that battle. And I'm sure most of you are winning. But if you're not, then try to re-strategize how you approach this. And um, yeah, let's meet in the next video. And before you go, remember to subscribe and also like this video. And also share to those people who are interested. And again, we can continue this conversation down in the comment region.